That's where I saw Jean-Claude Van Damme. Is that true he got in a fight with you? No. I, 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 it'd be like me squashing an ant. I don't remember where, I'm, 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 I don't know if it was the Inquirer, but I remember reading something about that. Come on. You, Larry? Oh, he said he did like a spinning double twist yeah, kick double or something. Kick. It's like one in front of it. If he sees me, he runs. Well, he said that he whooped some Aikido ass or something. I don't know. Come on. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Keith Vitale. Welcome to Sidekick Podcast. Say hi to my producer, Corey Gomez. Hi, Corey. How you doing? I'm good. How's everybody else doing tonight? Wonderful, wonderful. I always like to be surprised by you. You've got great questions. You are definitely a martial arts film buff. And uh, so I always like to be surprised. And my audience out there, he doesn't tell me in advance the questions he's going to ask me. So I kind of like this. This is kind of exciting for me at the same time. So go ahead. You got another question for me. This is kind of a two-part question. Two-part question. So I'm going to go with part one first. Once again, I have video footage to back these questions up. I'm not just making up nonsense. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Big fan. Bloodsport. Lionheart. Death Warrant. Hard Target. Love these movies. Do you believe that Van Damme, I'm, we're, I'm not discrediting him in any way, but do you believe he is the accomplished martial artist, tournament fighter, champion that everyone says he is? I've never heard anyone say that he's any of that. Now, he made some prior claims that he might have won a tournament. And, and again, I don't fault him for that because prior to the internet, you know, people were fabricating their their resumes all the time. You know, I believe me, I I taught a, an action film camp in North Carolina with Michael DiBasquale and Keith Strandberg. And we'd have people come in from all over the world uh, to come in to learn how to break into the films. And when they come in, my first question every time is, raise your hand if you're a world champion. And out of 100 people, 60 or 70 would raise their hands. And I go, what world are we talking about? So really, Van Damme was no different. He was a young man from Belgium. He probably fought some tournaments, but he wasn't a noted tournament fighter. I mean, he fought him some, but that wasn't his gift. His gift was him, his technique and his charm and his accent, his all of that together that created that personality. Uh, but for those that try to say, well, he didn't win those tournaments, I always go, who cares? Who cares where he came from and if he won a tournament or not? But... It's before the internet, and some people made those claims. And now with the internet, you can source everything out. So you got to be very careful when you make a claim because people can root out and find out if you were telling the truth. Part two, this question brings up one of my heroes. Reason I had a ponytail when I had hair. <laughs> Steven Seagal, who is a legitimate martial artist, contrary to what everybody wants to make fun of. He is the first uh american to open a dojo in japan to train he said when he was asked on multiple occasions even to this day when they say you know is van damme a tough guy he usually goes do you want me to laugh in your face Best legitimate hollywood tough guy in your opinion you accept it of course when you say tough guy do you mean martial artist or just tough i mean guy? i mean stephen for real if he was on the street and there was a situation you wanted this hollywood guy by your side because he could defend himself. It's that hard to think of a legit one? Can you think of one? Thoughts on Jean-Claude Van Damme? Can I laugh in your face? And the rumor is Van Damme once offered $20 million to fight Steven Seagal. And Steven Seagal was like, I don't want to laugh in your face. Do you think Steven Seagal versus Van Damme, how would you see that fight going down if it ever were to happen? Oh, that's pretty. I've never heard that question before. I've never heard anybody even put those two together in the same sentence. Um, I've met both, but here's the thing about Steven Seagal. I have really close friends that are stuntmen, that are actors, that have been in his films, but I have also good friends that have attended his seminars. Nothing to do with martial arts uh, films. And I've asked them point blankly. I've said, tell me the truth. Is he really that good of a martial artist? And the, some of the baddest guys I know on the planet said, Keith, I'll be honest with you. He's dynamite. He's everything that you think he is and a bag of chips. He's really good. And he's just, you know, he's just so knowledgeable. And like you said, he opened up and trained in Japan. And he has size to his advantage. 
you know, he's probably 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", weighs 200-something pounds, and most of the time he's flipping younger, smaller people around. But uh, Van Dom is, you know, he's a pretty boy. He he has great technique, but I wouldn't put him in the same ring with Seagal. I, I, you know, when they're both in their prime, believe me, I just think Steven Seagal is just too powerful because he's not – they're not doing kickboxing. They're not doing – UFC MMA, what they were doing was be fighting to survive. And the first time that really a jiu-jitsu guy like, like Seagal got his hands on uh, Van Damme, it had been all over. You know, and I I, I have a good friends of mine. Michael De Pasquale, God bless him. He's no longer with us. One of the best jiu-jitsu pr practitioners on this planet. Not that Seagal was, but he was trained in the same kind of aspects, the same uh, arenas. I'm telling you, when Michael De Pasquale gets his hands on you, you're gone. Uh, when is when Remy Prices or any of these great guys when they get their hands on you, you're gone. You know, thank God I had a sidekick and I'd have to sidekick just to keep him away from me. Same thing would happen if Seagal got his hands on Van Damme. I just believe the fight would be over. You know? Do you know Van Damme? No. Uh, <laughs> you, you've heard of him. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with him, Stephen. Uh, what, what do you think of, of his work as a martial artist first? change the subject <laughs> well i mean because like you guys go back to the martial arts world before you were movie stars right i mean he was like a a champion somewhere and right i mean you well i mean i i just promised all my mentors that i was going to be a good boy mm -hmm. um i think that that's a matter of opinion that he was a champion anywhere you know? <laughs> And, and I mean, you know, I'm not being catty or anything. I wish the guy all the best. But there are an awful lot of people who say that that's not true. So you think if that fight, do you think that, that Van Damme and Seagal ever, do you think Van Damme ever actually challenged him or do you think that's made up? I think it's made up. You know, to, it, to Van Damme's credit, he shouldn't do it, wouldn't have to do it. He already has some reputation. He doesn't have to prove himself to anybody. Why would he subject himself to get in a ring and maybe lose just enjoy life and be a big movie star i was making movies at the same time both of them were making movies and they had two different personas one guy was a bad to the bone guy steven seagal and one guy of course uh, john van, uh, van, van damme he was just charming and he had phenomenal techniques but what he really was was he was the prototype for a martial artist just like Dolph Lundgren was the prototype for a bad guy for Rocky IV. If you just wrote a script and say, give me the give me the Terminator, a robot, Russian, perfect, you know, scenario for a guy to go up against Sylvester Stallone. While there is uh, Dolph Lundgren. Same thing. If you wrote a script, you said, give me the perfect build, look, charm, flexibility, all that. Get the perfect one. Back then, you would choose somebody like um, Van Damme. He would just, you know. Listen, I was doing films at the same time. I couldn't do half what he could do. There's, you know, he could do splits and jumps, spins, and, and that whole whole stuff. He was really good. So five round UFC fight. How many rounds would it take Steven Seagal to tap out or knock out Van Dam? It'd be more of a tap out. He'd probably have to take him to the ground and get him in a, one of the the locks. You know, because once he captured his legs, he, Van Dam would do a round kick or a spinning kick, and he would capture it. And then once you capture it, then you take it and you just put it in one of your locks and it's all over. It's not what you can do. You know, if he could, if Van Damme could run around the ring for five rounds, he'd probably survive, but it'd be tough. <laughs>